Hi, I'm Hayley from Craft Yourself Silly and I'm here to take you through another fantastic create and craft and take a break craft along. So we've done the pin cushion and now we're having a look at the needle case. So this starts very, very similarly to the pin cushion. You're going to need a little kind of flower as we call them. So one in the middle and six around the outside. And then we're going to build that up by adding two more rows of three. So there's one row of three and then there's a second row of three. Once you've got all of those sewn together, what you're going to do is you'll end up with something like this. So let's move those out of the way and let's have a look at this one. So with this one, it's, it's going to create that, that kind of folded in half. Let me just fold this over. So it's going to create that needle case shape. But what we need to do is we need to take the paper out. So to take the paper out, you're going to take all those stitches out and then just get your fingernail underneath and take those out. Now, before you take the ones around the edge out, if you have a look here, I've just actually marked those. I've marked them with uh, either a pencil or you can even do them with just a normal biro, anything that isn't gonna go through to the front of the fabric, because this is only for the back. And you're gonna mark these all the way along because what you'll need to do is you'll need to sew this to the backing piece and in order to do that you'll need to be able to see where that shape is that you need to follow because obviously this is not a regular shape and by drawing those in while you've still got the paper pieces in it will save you a whole load of heartache when it comes to putting it together. So once all those paper pieces are out and you've got your lines drawn in, then what I would advise is you give it a quick press because you're going to want all of these pieces on the outside to be flat because when you're sewing them and they're like this, they're all flapping all over the place, it's a little bit more challenging. But if you can get everything pressed nice and flat, and to do that, let me just grab this mat that's over here because I don't want to iron on the cutting board. So if I pop this in and then tape my iron, it can be just a normal everyday iron that you're using for this. And then we're just going to press these nice and flat. Make sure you do keep your fingers well out of the way so that you don't burn yourself and just work your way slowly all the way around the edge. And it makes a huge difference to the easiness of sewing it together if you do spend that little bit of time and just flatten those edges out. Once you've got those all flattened, then you're going to create the sandwich that is going to be the backing for your needle case. So first piece that needs to go down, you've got a piece of batting within your kit that needs to go down first. Then face up, so the pattern facing towards you, you're going to need the backing piece. Now this is exactly the same shape as your piece of fabric that you've just created by putting all your patchwork pieces together. So that will fit on there exactly. And you've got a really generous seam allowance, as you can see, between the edge of the fabric and the hexagons that you've put in there. So once that's all flat and layered up, you're gonna stitch around all of those lines that you've created. Now, you can do this by hand, or if you've got a machine and you wanna speed up the process, you are absolutely welcome to do it by machine as well. It's whatever you feel most comfortable with. Once that's together, we will end up with something like this. So this is all those three layers sewn together and I've left a gap just at the bottom here. So I've left again two sections, two straight lines open at the bottom and that's to allow us to turn it right side out. Now ideally you want to leave these on whatever you deem to be the back of your piece. Now an important thing that you'll see on here versus if I bring this one back in is all of this excess fabric from the top has been trimmed off and also the bits between the hexagons has been trimmed through and just little snips put in so that there's that movement between them because if you don't trim into those obviously your top layer has automatically got a gap in there because it's two hexagons joined together but on the backing piece that you're adding that one is a continuous piece so you need to add little snips in there that go through both of those layers so when you turn it out you've got those nice sharp hexagonal 
element to it. And also you want to cut across the top of the hexagons. So for example, on here, there's that excess fabric. If I just lift it up and show you this bit, it's a bit easy to see. You've got that pointy bit on the end. You want to go ahead and trim those off so they're nice and flat. So you don't have a whole load of excess fabric and bulk when you turn it right side out. So from there, we're going to take this one that's all of those layers together and we're going to turn it right side out. So I need to find the gap that I've left. Again, really, really gently with this because what we don't want to do is disturb any of our lovely hand stitches that we've put in there. So just slowly, 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 you can turn this through. And then once it's the right way out, a good press. Always, always a good press. You can rescue a lot of sewing with a good press with the iron. And by press, we, I do mean that. I mean a press, not a wiggle, because it's really tempting to get a, an iron on there and then kind of move it all about. That's really not what we want for this kind of sewing. We want to put the iron on, hold it in place, move it along, hold it in place. So as I'm pushing these out, I've just got, so I've got a big wooden knitting needle here, but anything like a chopstick, anything that isn't your scissors basically, and I'm guilty of doing this all of the time, um, but you want something that really hasn't got that metallic sharp point on it. So you can get all of those edges right the way out and it looking really, really smart, but without risking going through your stitches because you've used something sharp and metallic. So let's get that corner out as well. And there we go, almost there. Just got a little few on this side. Let's push that one a bit further. And that one. And then just this one here. There we go. So now it's right side out. My first job is going to be to give it just a general press. And you can do this on either side. I actually recommend you do it on both sides. So one side and flip it over and then do the other. Now we need to seal up this gap here where we turned it right side out. So to do that, we need to flip those two bits of the hexagons back in and then get the little friends and flip those under two and press them shut. So let's just give that a quick press. And then flip it over, do it from the other side. And then the last thing we need to do is a little bit of a ladder stitch. So the same stitch as we used with the pin cushion. See, there's my pin cushion, almost done. And exactly the same stitch. And we're gonna use that ladder stitch to seal up that little gap that we've got where we've turned it right side out. So I'm gonna get a, bit of, a bigger bit of thread than that because that was a bit of a stingy bit. So you get plenty within the kit. So if you have gone for the kit from Craft Yourself Silly and Create and Craft, then you'll have absolutely everything that you need in there, including your easy thread needle where you can just ping your thread in from the top. So let's put a knot in the bottom. Now this doesn't need to be a particularly neat knot because you're gonna hide it within the, the seam allowance anyway. So I'm gonna come in through the middle and you're going to come out at this point here, kind of right on the corner. So you want to be within that seam allowance and coming out here, right on that corner. And then exactly the same stitch as we used for the pin cushion. We're going to use a ladder stitch to seal this up. And a ladder stitch means that you're better off kind of having it facing you towards you. So you've got the uh, you're working away from you essentially, but you're working from the, the center of it rather than working from a side. And we're gonna take a little piece of fabric through the seam allowance of one side, and then coming up at the same level, another little bit through the opposite side. And you're gonna work your way all the way along doing exactly that same thing. So in and out like a running stitch on one side. Oop. There we go. And same again on the other. And once you're right up to that join in the center, what you'll see is, can you see they've got almost like a little ladder effect coming there. And when you're ready, you can just pull those tight and that will all disappear. So that's how you close the gap and make it just about invisible. Once you've closed that gap, it's then time to add the felt leaves in, which are going to create the space where you can add your needles. So grab the pieces of felt that are within the kit. It does say what size you need to cut these. You 
get one long piece of felt in there. About half of that is to go in your little bobbin roll and the, the rest is to go into this project here. So with it on its back like that, so you, you've got the lining facing up, you are gonna take those bits of felt and fold them in half to find the center. Once you've got the center, if you just mark it, because you have folded this one and just marked it top and bottom there, get it nice and central within your outer piece, your patchworked piece, and then pop a pin in just to hold this in place. So I'm just gonna pop a pin in to hold it there. If you've got another one, then one both sides is great. Then flip it over because to hide your stitches, really you wanna be stitching what we call in quilting terms, stitch in the ditch. So stitch in the ditch is stitching already in a seam that's there. So it becomes almost invisible. So I would stitch down here and then down this one here, not in that middle bit, because you would see that white line of stitching. But if I put a row of stitching here and then a second one here, that's enough to hold those pages in place. But again, looks almost invisible from the outside. So let's grab my needle again. And with this one, we're just gonna do a running stitch. So just in and out. Now we wanna hide the knot in this. So I'm gonna stitch through just so I can start to catch that. And back again. Now, actually, I think I'm gonna flip this over just for a second because I wanna keep the knot on the inside. So it's one that you're gonna to have to kind of move back and forth so you can make sure you keep the knot out of the way of your front and it's kind of disguised in the middle. So I'm just gonna put a little double knot in here. So there's one, nice and tight. And then again, and by stitching in the ditch, so stitching in that already um, visible seam line, then that's gonna make it look way more professional and it's gonna make it look more invisible as well so you've not got obvious stitching on the outside so we're going to come in and out as ideally quite small stitches that you want and then back through and as i come back through i'm just making you know making any adjustments that i need to make sure that my needle is coming up within that seam allowance and then back down again and this one is one you're going to have to flip back and forth to make sure you're getting the results you want you can see here i'm just that little bit off so I'm going to just pull that back and shuffle it across a little bit to make sure I'm within that seam allowance. And then when you get to the top where it joins the next hexagon, I'm just going to come back on myself and go back down. So I've effectively got two runs of stitching there and it'll be nice and secure. And then I'll repeat that exact same process for the other side. And your needle case is almost complete. Okay. So once that's sewn in top and bottom, your needle case is there. I would definitely give it a press just to help it keep its shape. Now you have got the option to add a button to this. You've got one within your kit and you've also got a little bit of ribbon. So if you want to keep yours um, completely closed and you want to kind of almost lock it shut, then you have got a bit of ribbon that you can stitch onto there and then you've got a button that you can stitch onto the other side as well. So that completes your needle case project. We've got one more to do and that is the bobbin roll. So if you wanna join us on that video, just have a look down below.